Hello everyone and welcome to the game engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. Previously we set up an import settings configurator that will let us tell the importer how it should import assets of any particular type. We also started making the configuration UI for geometry assets, which we didn't quite finish, so in this new episode we are going to continue and get that part done. In addition, we'll do a number of enhancements to the overall asset management system as well. Today we are going to add the settings options for importing geometry assets. The very first thing that I'd like to do is to revert something I did in the last video, which was making this method internal. This is pretty much the same as making it a public method, which is not what we want in an architecture that's somewhat clean. The reason that I did this was to make a hacky solution for a problem that was caused by a suboptimal decision. Now we can remove this method, which was calling on property changed. Now, once again, when an item is removed, the item numbering is not updated, which is the problem that was caused by me not knowing about something and that something turned out to be a converter that comes with WPF. It's called alternation converter and we can use it to tell each item what its color should be depending on the alternation index. So we can define our two colors here and use this converter instead of our own style with triggers. Here we see the list box item style where we can remove the triggers and simply bind the background color to item controls alternation index using the alternation converter. We can bind the alternation count of the list box to the number of proxies and the converter will figure out which color to use for each index. Where we display the item indices using the old converter, now we can just use the alternation index instead. Note however that this is a zero based index, so if you'd like it to start at one, you'll have to use a converter again. I think I'm going to leave it as is for now. I do use a string format, and because I'd like to include a space between the number and the file's name, I put the formatting string between single quotation marks. Also note that contrary to how we did it in geometry details view where we used the templated parent, now we look up the list box item in the visual tree instead. This is because the templated parent in this case is a content presenter and not the list box item and therefore wouldn't provide us with the correct alternation index. Running the editor, we can see that we have numbered items and when I remove an item, the indices are updated accordingly. Here we need to use last write time. Now we can move on to creating a control for geometry import settings. Right now we have this placeholder which we can replace by a new control which I'll call geometry import settings view. As always, fix the namespace first. As you'd have guessed, the data context for this control is geometry import settings.
This is actually a fairly simple control where we use basic WPF controls to bind to various settings, starting with how the normals should be imported. For vertex normals, we can tell the importer to either calculate the normals or import the value that's provided with the content file. We can bind directly to the boolean property for calculate normals, and since we only have two options, we can use the selected index of the combo box to set it to true or false. We can repeat this for tangents. This time, the method of calculating tangents is called mcT space or tangent space. I'll explain what this is in a bit more details when we do normal mapping, which requires a tangent space, but for now it's a method for calculating the tangents of a mesh consistently in a way that it won't result in certain artifacts in normal mapping. The next setting is smoothing angle. This is only useful when the importer calculates the normals instead of importing them from the content file. This way we can tell our geometry processor to merge shared vertices of two triangles if their normals differ less than a threshold, which is given by the smoothing angle. This is a value between 0 and 180 degrees, and I'm going to use a slider for setting its value. In one of the next episodes, I'm going to create a style for sliders such that they'll automatically display the slider value. That's why I'm not going to bother adding a text block for this right now, but feel free to add one if you want to see the slider value. Next is the option to import embedded textures if the content file supports embedded media. In case of FBX format, it's possible to pack textures in the same file and therefore we can choose to import them or not. This can be done using a checkbox. Similarly, we can choose to import animation data or not. The next setting is something that we haven't implemented yet in the importer, and that's reversing the triangle winding. For some reason though, we do have a settings option for it, so why not add it? And finally, I'd like to add the option to coalesce meshes that would otherwise be saved to separate asset files. We don't have a setting for it yet, but I'm going to implement it in this episode. Now we can put this control here instead of the placeholder. Don't forget to bind its data context to the import settings property of the selected proxy. We should now be able to configure import settings for geometry assets. Let's try and import this model such that it only has hard edges. So I can try and do it again with calculated normals instead. And here's the model with a not so smooth surface. We can also try setting the smoothing angle a bit lower, which will smooth some edges, but will leave others as hard edges. Now the thing is that it's really easy to forget that we are only setting these options for a single file. Although we are able to select multiple files, these settings belong to only one of them. This is kind of annoying when you select a couple of items and change their settings only to find out that only one of them was configured. 
The best way to solve this would be by doing the multi-selection view model scheme we did for game entities and their components. However, I don't think it's worth the effort to implement that for this use case. Instead, in order to notify the user that the settings only apply to one file in their selection, we can add a visual cue that will appear whenever multiple items are selected. To this end, I'm going to add a border control on top of the import settings. It has an orange border and a semi-transparent background. When the user hovers over the border, which is likely because they would like to change one of the settings, they'll find that they can't change anything. In addition, the tooltip will inform them that the settings apply to a single item, but they can use the Apply to Selection button to apply the current settings to selected items. We can add a style trigger which hides the border whenever only one item is selected. And I'm going to be a bit piggy and use a few borders to depict a little lock in the bottom right corner. One more thing is to show the Apply to Selection button only when the border is visible. Now we can see that the border appears when we have multiple items selected. We can also test these buttons to see if they do apply the current settings to the selection and to all items respectively. Again, if you'd like to do this properly, you can implement the exact same method as we did for game entities and components, as you can see here. The next bit of functionality that I'd like to add is the ability to set the destination folder for each file. This is useful when we want to save some of the files to a different location than where we dropped them in the content browser or when we open the settings window without dropping files, in which case the last destination folder might not be where we want to save the imported assets. For this, I'm going to add a new control that displays the location where the file will be saved, as well as a button that will open a folder selection dialog where we can navigate to a different folder and select it. I'll call it change destination folder. The data context for this control is asset proxy, since we only need to have access to destination folder property. It has a grid with two rows. In the first row, we have a text block, which will let the user know which file we are talking about. It's got the default foreground color, which is black, but it will pick up the editor's font color once we place it in the configuration window. The second row displays the path within content folder where the asset will be saved. Like I mentioned, it also has a button that will let us change the destination folder. I'll write the folder selection code in the next video.
Let's add this to our configuration control so we can see how it looks. Running the editor, we see that it's showing the absolute path to destination folder. However, I want to see the relative path within the content folder of the game project. As often is the case, we can write a converter that will return this relative path. In this converter, we can get the project's content path and if value parameter is a string that contains the content path, we remove the content folder and prefix the remaining part with the directory separator character. Of course we need to actually use the converter, which I forgot, but I can do it while the editor is running. Now we can see the destination folder being displayed as a relative path. In the next video, we are going to create the folder selection bit and make a few improvements to the content browser and how editor windows are managed. Thank you as always for joining me and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub so you don't have to type everything over from the video. Plus there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. I hope to see you next time, until then take care and happy game engineering!